Good morning. Each week at Grace Bible Church, we stop everything that we are doing and remember Jesus through the taking of the Lord's Supper. We eat a piece of bread and we take a cup of juice that reminds us of our Lord and his body given and blood spilt on our behalf as we look forward together to his return. And this morning, we're going to be looking at 2 Corinthians 12, starting in verse 7. And if you don't have a Bible, we have some to offer you. So please raise your hand and we'll be sure to get you one. And if you don't own a Bible, this is yours to keep. Turn to 2 Corinthians 12, verse 7. And as you're doing that, let me set the stage. We're dropping into the climax of Paul's letter in a section defending his apostolic ministry to the Corinthians. In chapter 11, Paul offered a highlight of the sufferings that he had undergone in service to Christ. Five times he had received 39 lashes, three times beaten with rods, once stoned, three times shipwrecked, floating at sea a night and a day. Frequent dangers, sleepless nights, hard work and hardship, often without food or water, hungry, thirsty, cold and exposed. And on top of that, he felt the daily burden of the pressure of concern for all of the churches. And finally, in our verse in 2 Corinthians 12, 7, Paul tells us of a trial that he describes as a thorn in the flesh that was sent from Satan for the purpose of tormenting him. Imagine all of these difficulties. They were uncomfortable, they were hard, and they made Paul's travels, preaching, and ministry more difficult. They appeared to be a hindrance to Paul's good purposes, to his ministry. And some of those sufferings, they're just part of living in a groaning post-fall world. But many were the result of wicked people and even Satan himself acting with evil intent against Paul. Let's stop and consider ourselves. I doubt any of us are facing trials as severe and, severe and varied as Paul's. But I'm aware of many many significant trials that some in this body have walked through and are persevering even today. It doesn't necessarily make your trial feel lighter to consider the weight of Paul's. And no doubt 2021, as you look back, had some difficult trials for you and inevitably 2022, if you are God's child, will bring more. How will you respond? Well, let's look at how Paul responded. Let's read together in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 8. Concerning this, I implored the Lord three times that it might leave me. The trials revealed Paul's weakness, so he turned to God in prayer. God is the sovereign Lord of all things, and not one thing, good or bad, can happen apart from him. And if you are a Christian, you are his child. He hears your pr prayers. He tenderly cares for you. And if he takes care of and provi provides for the birds and the flowers, you can rest assured that he will take care of you and provide exactly what you need, even if it isn't exactly what you prefer. You can pray with faith. Now, Paul, the apostle, in response to his pleading prayer, he actually received an answer from the Lord that certainly applies to all who have been saved by grace through faith. Look at Jesus' tender response, 2 Corinthians 12, 9. He replied to Paul, and he said, My grace is sufficient for you for power is perfected in weakness. God's grace is his undeserved favor to mankind. And that grace was sufficient for Paul in his trials. 
that grace is sufficient for you, for me. God's grace is our only hope for faith, for forgiveness of sins, for imputation of righteousness. And God's grace is our only hope for our perseverance in faith and sanctification. God's grace towards Paul was not seen in the removal of the trial, but in God's unmerited favor toward Paul in his suffering. God's grace was shown by not removing the thorn and thereby accentuating Paul's weakness. God knew that Paul was in danger of exalting himself, and this trial was exactly what he needed to reveal his weakness and by grace protect him from ministry-destroying, heart-poisoning sin. This morning, as we remember Christ in communion, I want us to consider Jesus' power. He has power to sustain you in your faith through your weakness. And in fact, when we recognize our weakness, when we are brought to the end of ourselves, which is often accomplished through trials, and we feel like we have nowhere else to turn other than the grace of God to sustain us, we are actually best positioned to have the power of God dwell in us. God is gracious, and he is gracious to bring us difficulties. This is why we can count it all joy, because the testing of your faith produces endurance. There is not a single rogue molecule in the universe that does not obey God's will precisely. Everything, every being is subject to God's perfect sovereign will. Consider Satan. Look at verse 7. What was Satan's purpose? It was to torment Paul. God's purpose was to sanctify Paul, to keep him from exalting himself. Consider Joseph and his brothers, Genesis 50, 20. They sold him into slavery, meaning to bring evil upon Joseph. God meant it for good, to keep them in the promised seed line of Abraham through Judah alive for their good and ours. And consider the cross. The cross was the height of evil intending sin, murdering the perfect son of God, and Acts 4.28 says that as they crucified him, they did whatever God's hand and purpose predestined to occur. Can you imagine how frustrating it is for Satan to see that as, at every turn as he seeks to obstruct God's purposes, he unwittingly serves them? How powerful Jesus is to use all things even evil, to accomplish his perfect good will. Consider Jesus and his power. You might be in a very difficult trial now. Inevitably, if you are God's child in his gracious and loving providence, you will be in one soon. Then how will you respond? If you have your eyes on yourself and off Christ, you will likely respond with grumbling, with anxiety, or any other number of self-dependent sinful responses. I pray that our considering of Christ and his power now will guard you for your response for the trial upcoming and help you repent if your response to previous trials has been other than it should. But let's emulate Paul's response after he heard of the Lord's sufficient grace. Look down at Verse 10, he says, therefore, I am well content, well content with weaknesses, insults, distresses, persecutions, and difficulties for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. God's grace superintends all things, even the most difficult of suffering, and for his good purposes, when we have our eyes on Christ, when we remember him in faith, our responses won't be grumbling, but a joyful, thankful, trusting contentedness. 
when the government passes laws that restrict your freedom, how do you respond? When you're sinned against, what's the state of your heart? When a loved one dies, when you lose your possessions, when you're sick, in chronic pain, isolated, hungry, hurting, or scared, anything that makes you feel your weakness, Jesus tenderly declares to all who are his, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. God's grace is not a let's make the best of the circumstances we find ourselves in kind of grace, but rather one that superintends evil for good and ordains every step, every second of your life, including the trials, especially the trial, to accomplish his perfect will. If my weakness is what is needed for Christ's power to be brought to completion in me, I'm content. And Christian, whatever trial you are in, whatever blessing you're receiving, or whatever comes this next year, resolve to be content for the sake of Christ. So let's remember Jesus hanging in apparent weakness on the cross. To us who are being saved, the cross is the power of God. But for you who have not turned to Jesus, you will not find this grace apart from turning. Jesus' sufficient grace can only be had by turning to him in faith. We all need grace. This grace does not come through merit. It is unmerited. It does not come through obedience, good works, religion, through self-effort, or any other way than faith alone. So if you have not been saved by grace through faith, then this time of remembrance isn't for you. Just let the bread and juice pass. And please don't leave today without turning to Jesus. He is Lord, whether you believe it or not. He offers you forgiveness, adoption, and eternal life if you will turn. So after service, these doors on your left, there will be people who will pray with you, tell you how this grace can be yours. Men, please serve us. If you're a Christian, for all who are Christ, please take the bread and juice on your own as you're prepared.